Um, I'd already done uh, several vertical working drawings and the finished vertical uh, uh, completed painting for this um, Abro Lancaster drift scale. Now, I've explained probably before in another thing that um, I was in a turret and I had to read off the drift on a scale. And the vertical one, I'd done some um, fields looking down because the idea was that I had to line up my guns on the um, uh, landscape below and when I'd lined them up I would read off the drift scale and tell the navigator through the intercom uh, what the drift was. Um, and uh, th there were some fields underneath on the vertical one. I rather liked those fields and I thought I would develop them and do a horizontal version with more fields and make more of the fields and less of the turret. And this is one of the working ones I used, of various colour fields, may uh, maybe a river going through, um, and various crops at various stages. Um, like all paintings, it's simply a, a pattern of colours and shapes um, to make an image. Um, and like all of my things, uh, I use my imagination and I hope that uh, the viewer will have to extend their imagination a bit as well. Um, when I was a prop swinger at Thiel Aerodrome, um, this was um, before I'd even done my first solo, it was a job I was doing. I actually got a little flying experience at the same time, but um, my job was as a prop swinger. And in flew a, a Western Lysander. They looked terribly clumsy things. They were very heavy, they were just a big um, bristle um, engine up the front, a radial engine. Um, and it landed very slowly. Um, and I had a very good look at it, and it had uh, wing slots and flaps. Well, that's to do with flying slowly, uh, where you take off or you land. These things alter the shape of the wing. And these very big things were extremely good at landing slowly on, on, on small surfaces. And they were used in the war to drop spies into France or collect them and bring them back. That was a sort of uh, main use for them. And um, and, and this I'm depicting a uh, field in France, um, those wonderful poplar trees that line their roads, the shadow of the Lysander on the field, maybe at night being blue, it might be snow, but it might be more, more probably, possibly night with, a, with someone pointing a light um, for the pilot so he knows which way to land and so on and so forth. Here's the Lysander coming into land. Um, I've spoken about this Bristol Wayfarer which flew from Lyd to Le Touquet just after the war, taking um, three cars and their passengers over to France um, from a grass field in Kent, which was Lyd and Le Touquet. I, I don't know whether it even, I think it did have a runway actually because it was used by the Germans in the war and I think um, uh, it was a more of a proper airfield than Lyd was. And, um, and I'd done a horizontal version. No, this is, the, this is the vertical version I did first, and I did a horizontal version of it later. Um, and this is the aircraft, which had a big wing, a couple of big Bristol engines, and dropping down into um, the airfield at Le Touquet. Um, and this might be grass, it might be um, sea, because we flew very low over the sea to get there. So that's that. It was quite a quite a simple one, but with a very powerful airplane and a, a, a vision, a sort of a, a depiction of an airplane, very, very powerful in the, in the in the small um, painting. Um, this is again one of the uh, working pastels toward. I thought it was going to be the last of my series, but in fact it was the one but last. And the, uh, I depict the crash I had in America. Uh, I was still very new to flying, and um, uh, the aircraft was, um, we, we were on a satellite field, a grass field, and we were landing and taking off, and landing and taking off, landing, called circuits and bumps. And every time we took off, the spray from the field, uh, from the field came up and, and froze on the underside of the wings of the aircraft, altering its aerofoil section. We didn't know much about it then, but um, 
We know a lot about it now and we are much more careful about um, flying uh, aircraft from um, freezing conditions. And in fact, the Manchester United crash, um, uh, when it, was it Munich when they were coming back and masses of the footballers were killed? That was due to almost exactly the same thing as happened here. And um, I found the controls getting very stiff, so I landed and got out and walked over to my um, instructor who was in a little hut. And he said, well, carry on if you like, or give up if you like. Well, there was, um, we had to rush through. Um, if, if you were held up at all, you went on to an, another course and you had to sort of start all over again. It was a nuisance. So to get flying hours in was extremely important. So I jumped in and off I went and um, the very short day I took off and the, um, and the controls froze absolutely solid. Um, and I had no opportunity to jump out because I was too low. A parachute wouldn't have been any good at all. Um, I did think of putting top rudder on, but I would have probably spun into the ground and killed myself. So I thought the best thing was to stay in and fly it in as best I could. And uh, that's what I did. And there was a mighty crash. Um, and the aircraft split behind my head, and the, both of the wings fell off, and it was a big, big bang. And this depicts the, uh, the crash, uh, the aircraft taking off, uh, flying up into the sky, freezing cold sky, losing control, coming down, bang, crash, wings, wheels, everything. And um, uh, that depicts the crash. It was a lovely airplane called a PT-19, a Cornell. Um, that's a beautiful aeroplane. You could hardly go wrong with it, except uh, it did freeze up. <laughs>